recently uploaded a video recording as well as the full script for episode 38 of the new on the family but I didn't have time to get the whole recording done so instead of picking up where we left off I'm just going to do the whole episode again and that was like a teaser so enjoy without further ado here is the new on the family episode 38 entitled grab the cookies quick Samantha's lesson in herself. Josh returns with the unopened cookie box to the men arguing, saying how mom would be saying they both sunk to a new low. Joey is saying it doesn't matter, buying is the same as having. And while Mike says having doesn't mean eating, starting to go off that the right to bear arms doesn't give you the right to use them, Josh quickly grabs the box, starts pilfering through the cookies, then turns to his bedazzled father and grandfather, saying, Now it doesn't matter. The cookies are gone, so his eating them cancels out Mike's buying them. But both men say it doesn't work like that, and Joey says, You bet a thousand, so pay up. Josh says money wasn't part of the bet, but Joey says he told him you're on. It ends with Joey crying, and I still haven't gotten any dinner, and getting Josh to finally give in and do it. Meanwhile, interspersed through all this, Dr. Moorfield is helping Samantha understand the deeper causes of her behavior that led to serious yet avoidable consequences, and the patterns in her life, and her ability to modify her behaviors and reactions. So there's serious and a really funny story, both of them intertwined with each other in the vortex of this single family. And this is what I am to do, and I'm breaking up the serious part with the funny part for comic relief, um, but they all communicate something. <laughs> and so without further ado, here is The New All in the Family, episode 38, Fade In, voiceover. Previously on the new wall in the family. Internal, the house, kitchen, day. Giselle and Joey are by the coffee maker while it brews. Joey. Hey, can I get one cup at least while you go on and on and on? Giselle. I thought you were going to get me some breakfast. Joey. Yeah, that's why I need the coffee. Giselle. Oh, Joey. She takes the carafe and pours him a cup. Giselle. The things I do for you. Cut to internal, the house, kitchen, day. Josh. Snow? Oh my god, I gotta go see. He starts for the door, but then stops suddenly, noticing something. Cut to Josh. Big smile. Hey, Grandpa, look what I see. You just lost the bet. Cut to internal of the house, living room, day, dusk. Joey, sitting in his chair. Mike standing on his way from upstairs, facing toward the kitchen. Josh suddenly bounds down the stairs. Josh. I'm hungry. What's for dinner? Cut to Josh goes toward the kitchen. Josh, you guys going to argue again? Never mind. I'll get it myself. As he's through the door off the screen. Morons. Cut to. Internal. Samantha's hospital room. Day. Dusk. Samantha. The moment the pills got into me were like the happiest time I ever had. Pause. And then the next thing I knew, I'm being rushed to the hospital. And I can't really remember exactly. But it was like I could never be happy again cut to Dr. Moorfield. You said Josh got erect, arrested. That must really have affected you, Samantha. I know, that's really strange, because I was never affected by Josh like that, cut to. I was really worried for my brother. I remember the time he held me when I was having nightmares, cut to Samantha. The day I met Kamala changed everything. Actually, it wasn't the day I met her. It was the day she first kissed me. It was a total surprise, but it was like the happiest moment of my life. Internal, the house, living room, day, dusk. Joey and Mike are there standing. Josh starting to head toward the stairs. Josh, don't look at me. I didn't buy the cookies. Cut to, Josh starts to head up the stairs. Joey, there he goes. I think he wants to get caught. Mike, you mean like your anti-hero Donald Trump who's begging for an indictment? Josh, on to off screen, laughing on his way up. 
All you two do is argue all the time the same way. I'm the only one who didn't turn out like either of you. And this is where we bring in the theme song, which I'm not going to sing right now. Caption, moving on, uninterrupted. Joey, incensed. How wrong you are, Mike, almost simultaneous. Josh, you're just like both of us, Joey. Not me, Mike. Yeah, he's a complete contradiction, Josh. No, I'm not, Joey. And another thing, you know, this country's really in trouble when it's the witches themselves who do the witch hunting, Mike. Joey, your version of reality is as warped as the man in orange. Or should I say, orange man in orange stripes. Joey, yeah, like you wish. He'll be wearing a bright red tie and a suit, and his only destination will be the Oval Office come January 2025. This time, the American people aren't going for it. And watch your grandson coming down in a minute, gloating that he polished the cookies, and I'll be so happy to slap that $1,000 bill on top of the one he already owes. I'll own this kid, Mike. You're really sick. Weren't you going to eat? I think I'm going to get my own sandwich. He starts toward the kitchen. Joey, I wanted a warm bowl of soup. Mike, well, come then. It's not going to make itself. Joey, yeah, you wish. I'll get the boy who already owes me so much to do the deed. He's my property now. Mike, off screen. Good luck. Internal, Samantha's hospital room. Day, dusk. Dr. Moorfield. Good. All right, let's move on to the big monster, the assault. Do you feel comfortable enough now to talk about it? Samantha. Yeah, why not? Didn't I bring it up the first time you came by? Dr. Moorfield. Yes, you did, but I don't want you walking into a police station or a courtroom and feeling so overwhelmed that you start to lose it, because that's exactly what the defense will be trying to pinpoint as a reason your case and your testimony can't possibly have any validity. Samantha. But what about Kamala? She'll keep it together, Dr. Moorfield. That probably won't convince most judges, and certainly not an entire jury, which it will probably go to. So you really have to have it together. Samantha. But why can't Kamala be enough? Dr. Moorfield. Because you're both plaintiffs who were, in the jury's eyes, the alleged victims. They are going to want to know what happened to you, and it just looks better and more convincing for both plaintiffs to present a reasonable case in a coherent way. You have to be able to answer the questions you were asked clearly and without getting emotional. Fortunately, Kamala was there, but it's not going to look good if your testimonies don't match in terms of what happened. So maybe we should go over exactly what did happen in detail. Is that okay? Samantha. I'll try. Dr. Moorfield, that's all you need to do. Internal, the house, living room, day, dusk. Josh returns down the stairs with the unopened cookie box. Mike enters from the kitchen, carrying a sandwich, which he is munching and relishing. Joey sits in his chair, upset. Mike, you still going to sit there and wait forever because you don't want to help yourself? Joey, you going to eat in the most disgusting, revolting way while I'm sitting here hungry, deserving to be served a meal? Josh, you still haven't gotten a meal? I can't believe you two, still arguing. Mike, don't look at me, I went and got something. Josh, I'll bet if mom were here, she'd say you both sunk to a new low. Joey, you're treading on thin ice, sir. Josh plops himself on the couch and reaches for the TV remote, the cookie box in his other hand. Joey, hey, who said you could watch TV? Josh, well, you're not watching it. Joey, and neither are you. Because one, you're still on punishment from before. And two, we're going to discuss the situation with the cookies, which you both crossed the line since I forbade them. Mike, you can't forbid me. Who's the father and who's the son? Josh, well, if you ask me, you're both delinquents and I should be in charge. Mike, whoa. Joey, almost simultaneous. Excuse me? Where do you dialogue at this point runs into each other? Mike, whoa, whoa. Joey, almost simultaneous. You're very much a part of this. Mike, uninterrupted. Don't think you're up, Joey, into uninterrupted. Sonny boy, Mike, uninterrupted. Getting off, yeah. Joey, okay, here's the thing. Shut up, both of you. Number two, points finger at Mike. Josh, ooh, you said number two. Joey, gla angry glare at Josh. Resume pointing at Mike. You're guilty because buying is the same as having. Mike, first of all, having isn't the same as eating, and eating is what the bet was all about. Joey, buying with intent to eat. 
Mike, still not the same. That's like saying the right to bear arms doesn't give you the right to use them. Joey, yes it does. Are you kidding me? What use is a gun if you don't use it? Now you're being stupid. Mike, no, it means owning it is one thing, but that doesn't automatically mean you can fire it off anytime you want. And don't even start with responsible gun owners, because that's exactly what we Democrats have been pushing for, that you Republicans keep blocking. Joey, I'm a responsible gun owner. Mike, yeah, but a law on the books doesn't guarantee that everyone who exercises the right to own a gun will use it responsibly. Therefore, the conversation moves very quickly, cutting each other off. Joey, oh, yes, it does, because you locked Josh. Can I interject with some common sense? <coughs> the tone gets even more heated, and the volume goes up in their next words. Both Joey, <coughs> excuse me, both Joey and Mike simultaneously. No, jo Joey. You lock up the bad ones, Mike, only after it's too late. Josh, trying to interject. Hey, we're talking about cookies. Joey, that's why you put guns in the hands of responsible people, so they can defend themselves before it's too late. <coughs> Josh, oh my God. He quickly grabs the box and starts pilfering through the cookies, then turns to his bedazzled father and grandfather, whose next words are simultaneous. <coughs> I'm sorry, I have a throat thing going on. I should have put on the artificial voice. <coughs> I'm so sorry. Okay, uh, Mike, what are you doing? Joey, wait, what? Josh, mouth real full now. Oh, I should have had some cookies for this one. Mmm. <laughs> Internal, Samantha's room, day, dusk, Dr. Moorfield. Now, what I already know from what you said is you took off the mask and Kamala told you to put it back on, which you did. And you told me you were sexually assaulted when a cop shoved a stick into your rear and another one into Kamala's. Is that correct? Samantha. Oh, so frightening. It was the scariest moment of my life. Dr. Moorfield. Are you able to go on? Samantha. Well, of course. I have to go on. I have no choice. Dr. Moorfield. All right, then. Tell me what happened before he did that. Why did you get brought in in the first place? What were you doing when the police cuffed you and took you in? Why do you think they did that? Samantha, because they like to just get over on people, to show how much power and how much macho they are, even though we were just following our legal right to demonstrate peacefully. Dr. Moorfield, so you were pretty outraged. And based on that, what did you do? Samantha, I yelled at them to let us go because we did nothing wrong. Dr. Moorfield. And obviously, they refuse to let you go. <coughs> you get ang really angry at them in response, Samantha? Of course I did. They were wrong, and they need to be told that. Dr. Moorfield, did you worry about the fact that these men had weapons? And I imagine they must have been bigger and a lot stronger than you. Samantha, hmm. I guess that wasn't my main thought with everything else happening. Dr. Morfield, I see a pattern here. He got really angry at your father when he demanded that you break up with Kamala and stormed off without considering what consequences that could have on yourself and on others. And now you're being handcuffed by police officers in the middle of what appears to already be a very tense situation and you're yelling at them, again not thinking about the consequences. <laughs> <coughs> Oh, man, if this keeps up, I might just turn on the artificial voice. Samantha, a lot of people were yelling. Dr. Moorfield, I can only imagine. Were those people also arrested? Samantha, uh, I know some were. Dr. Moorfield, and did they also put up a fight like you did? Samantha, hmm. Well, I know Kamala was, like, trying to do the opposite, but it still had the same effect. They hauled us in anyway, Dr. Moorfield. Do you, not, do you understand why she was trying to not resist them? Samantha, yeah, I remember. She told me you have to be really careful when you're black and the police try to mess with you. Dr. Moorfield, I think there's something more crucial here than the race thing, but even just because you were with someone black, did it not occur to you that maybe some caution was warranted? Samantha, yeah, I see what you're saying, but I was too upset then. Dr. Moorfield, did it occur to you to think, to ask yourself why she wasn't speaking up the way you did? Samantha, pause. 
I don't know. Maybe because I was white, I thought I could get away with what more than she could. Honestly, I don't really remember. Let me try to explain to you something, Samantha. This is important. This is very important. I kind of tricked you by asking you if that thought occurred to you then. But the truth is, no one in any emotional situation can think beyond one's immediate thoughts. And that applies to all of the times you got emotional in the house, not just this one, like when you stormed off with Kamala, the times you got mad at your mom, Samantha. But what about all Dr. Moorfield? Hang on, let me finish. Samantha, what they did, getting all upset, Dr. Moorfield. Okay, remember, you can't change someone else. The only person you have control over is yourself. Internal, the house, living room, night. Joey. Actually, this is Josh, not Joey. Boy, a lot of type. The thing with the doing the latest episodes, you're going to come across this stuff. Okay, Josh. I wish I really had something. I don't even know what Josh is saying, but I'm trying, I don't know. when it goes onto screen, I don't know what I'm going to do with that actor to get him to say something that makes sense. Anyway, Joey, both shocked and mischievously, the genius finally sunk to a new low. Josh, still mouthful of cookies. What are you talking about? Rubbing belly, smiling. I just had the best time ever. Joey, you're disgusting while your dad starves. Mike, you just said you wanted to win the thousand dollars. So what are you complaining about? You can order it now and charge it to him. Joey, on my time? Like he's ever going to pay. Now who's the idiot? Mike, I was being sarcastic, calling you out on your stupid expectation. Josh, well, it doesn't matter now. Joey, oh, he's going to pay. I own him. Josh, because the cookies are gone, and my eating them cancels out his buying them. Mike, Josh, sorry to dispel your glee, but Joey, in fact, now you can make me that hot dinner I've been, Mike. It doesn't work like that, Joey. Asking for it since I got home. <coughs> but I don't need soup because I'm already boiling from all this moronacy. Josh, to Mike, yes it does. And quickly to Joey, no you don't. Joey, continuing on. I'll have a steak well done, Josh. Own me. Moronacy? Mike, Moronacy? I didn't buy any steak anyway. Josh, and I didn't make no such bet. I made the bet with Grandpa, and since he bought the cookies and I ate them, the whole thing's canceled. Mike, amen to that. I'm willing to call the whole thing off. Joey, well, you can do what you want, but he took me on for the thousand dollars, so get in the kitchen and start cooking. I don't care if it's not a steak. <coughs> I'll take a sandwich. Josh, how did I bet you? You weren't even here. Joey, neither was he, but I have it right here. He shows his phone. Josh, trying to get a view of Joey's screen. Where do you have it, Joey? I wouldn't try to move in on a hungry man. Josh, backing off. Then you can't, can't don't have it because you can't prove I said that. Joey, I got your grandfather. He heard you say that to Mike. And don't try to lie to protect him after what he just called you. Plus, locking you in his stinky, piss-filled room, remember? A sudden silence quiets and calms the place down. Mike, Joey, knowing Josh, I wouldn't put it past him, and it sounds like something he would say, Josh. That's because I said it to you earlier, but that was for our bet, and Dad wasn't even here. Mike, I don't know, Joey. I'm not going to take sides. I didn't actually hear him say it, but if he said it, I still don't think you should take it out on a child, Joey. You're both lying, wusses. No dice. Now you get in there and I want a warm cooked meal. Josh, I thought you said your blood was boiling. Joey, don't get smart with me. Now get, or it'll be boiling again on your ass. Josh, fine, you win. I really miss Samantha. He gets up and storms reluctantly into the kitchen. Mike looks toward him, looking very moved and touched. Josh, off screen from kitchen behind door. You're such a baby. Sounds of pots and dishes banging can be heard. Joey, you better not break anything to Mike. Well, I guess you can go now. Mike, did you hear what he said? Joey, I hear too much of what he says. Mike, he said he misses his sister. Joey, well, who cares <laughs> to that? I hate them both. Mike, you don't mean that. 
Joey. You can go home now, Mike. All right, fine, but don't come crying to me to do your work. It's all on you now, buddy. I'm just here for Josh. Joey picking up the TV remote. Yeah, you two deserve each other. The sound of any reality show is heard as a din. Internal, Samantha's hospital room. Night. Dr. Warfield. My point is, we need to work on helping you identify what makes you go off like you do. Even when it's justified, such as the riot. Samantha. And don't forget at the house. Dr. Moorfield. Okay. But the point is, not who's right or wrong. Just think about what Kamala did. She was very careful. Samantha. Are you going to turn this into she's smarter than me? Dr. Moorfield. She is smarter than you. But that doesn't make her better. Don't get upset. It's not about that. It's about understanding what sets you off. Because obviously you have a long history with that. And we've already worked to help you be more assertive without being belligerent. That's the whole point of what the affirmation is. <coughs> to reaffirm your dignity in a positive, prideful way without getting out of control. The reason people get crazy and angry and belligerent is because they feel total loss of control in situations. But the reality is, even though you can't control the outcome, you can control your behavior. Kamala is proof of that. Uh, while you got really mad and she actually praised you for being so brave, she, on the other hand, got scared and cautious. Maybe being black helped her know the more prudent, wiser course of action. Samantha, yeah, she's kind of always been my ro she's she's kind of always ooh, yeah, she's kind of always kind of been like that. Oh, that's a little bit tongue twister. Yeah, she's kind of always been like that. <coughs> she's like my rock of support when I need her or when I lose it, Dr. Moorfield. But you can develop that strength. You just have to practice self-control in situations because now you have two people you can definitely trust to unload on. Plus, you also have your mom who you seem to be starting to build trust with. And that's going to be big going forward. Not just at the hearing but getting into a good school, getting a career you are fulfilled by. My main concern is helping you find a different mode of processing when things go wrong so you never have to go through at least two of the scary things you went through. My secondary concern stops a slight moment. Are we clear? Samantha. So how do I do that? Dr. Moorfield, you already are starting to with to, yeah, you already are starting to with the work we've done so far and your interactions with your mom and Kamala, plus how you handled last night. But first, I want to say that my secondary concern is for you. Uh, court. Oh, my secondary concern is to develop a clear narrative for you for the court, so we're going to have to go over the details of your arrest and detainment from different angles. They might already challenge you pointing out that you were belligerent, but of course, they can't hold that as disproving your case since your behavior and what was done to you are entirely separate. Nothing ever justifies that kind of assault, even robbery or a violent crime. But, <coughs> on the other hand, your belligerence did open up a series of events that led to that horrible occurrence. And it seems clear to me that it could have been avoided if you had acted with self-control and rational thought. What you need to recognize is that your behavior at the moment the cop sees the two of you was not thought out, but reactive. Uh, you were reacting based on a habitual pattern of emotions that life taught you. I suspect, while it may not have worked well for you, the fact that you told me home felt like hell must have been because your parents, at least judging from your dad, of course I can't know them that well, but it seemed he was kind of emotional himself, and I'm sure you were grow as you were growing up, you probably picked up some of that. And then your mom, with all her extreme rules, became a walking target for your anger. You felt nobody listened to you, so you yelled. The tendency to raise one's voice is common in people who've grown feeling ignored, disregarded, canceled. Samantha, that's so true. You're so wise. I wish you had been there while all that was happening, Dr. Moorfield. Well, we can't change the past, 
But the important thing is you understand how to change the future. For that, you have all the power in the world if you think carefully before doing something. And that's not easy. You have to unlearn behavioral and thought patterns that are so ingrained in you. But you can do it. You're very young. Many people do this who are not in therapy. Teenagehood itself is a time children grow up a lot. And that involves a lot of rethinking. It's just unfortunate that all that stuff happened almost all at once. The pandemic, your isolation, the protest, the assault, your breakdown and overdose. That's a lot for any adult to handle, let alone someone in their formative years, which is already fraught with all kinds of mental and emotional turmoil. So kudos, Samantha. You actually made it through an incredibly difficult, tough situation bunch of situations the best you could and for that you have become very strong and even wise I want you to remember that and keep dignified Samantha breathes a sigh of relief with a truly happy smile Dr. Moorfield now we've done a lot of work today we've got to now go over in detail exactly what was going on at the time just before you got arrested and everything all the way through the actual invasion of your person but I think we're getting close to discharge. I don't want a repeat of what happened before, so we're going to monitor you around the clock to be double sure you'll be okay, all right? Samantha, boy, we went late. That's a lot. Thank you so much, Doc. He gets up and moves toward the door, waving. I'm on call tonight, so I'll be around in case some of the nurses can't make it in due to the extreme weather. Samantha. Extreme weather? Yeah, there's a blizzard outside. Oh, that's Dr. Moorfield. Yeah, there's a blizzard outside. Samantha. What? Dr. Moorfield. Yeah, it's getting kind of crazy. It's Yeah, it's kind of crazy getting a blizzard here in sunny California, which is more known for the extreme drought. So I guess it's kind of a balancing out as he's leaving. Get some rest. This was a lot. Internal, the house, living room, night. Joey, one last chore. Get me a beer. Mike, ah yes, words I've heard before you were born. Well, since you said goodbye, I'm just going to take off and you can get your own beer. He heads toward the kitchen. Joey, taking out and lighting a cigar, pointing to the front door. The door is that way. The din on the TV continues. He picks up the phone. Joey, placing call. Where the hell is she? It's after 8.30 already, my God. Fade out. Okay, thank you those who attended my live recording on Instagram. And that's it for episode 38. I apologize greatly for my throat and for all the typos. But, you know, that's just part of the whole thing. It's, ex it's exciting and adventurous. Uh, the script should be posted on my Facebook page. So you can see the whole thing as it is supposed to be. And hopefully we'll get really good actors able to do the parts. Take care now. Have a great day. Bye-bye.